Our next uh, presenting company here today will be Cordate Medical. And uh, beside me here we have Andos uh, Weiland. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for checking in on this presentation of Cordate Medical. Um, this company is listed on the Nordic Growth Market, uh, NGM uh, SME list uh, under the ticket of uh, SMH. Um, our charter is neuromodulation by kinetic oscillation. Neuromodulation of um, the anatomic, anatomic uh, nervous system. That's uh, a hard, hard word to say. Um, and I'm going to present where we are in terms of our sales and our current products that are CE marked and also where we are uh, positioned in, in our current research. Um, the autonomic nervous system, that was the word, um, concerns both chronic rhinitis and also chronic migraine, which is our new indication. And the treatment here and the technology is exactly the same, basically, for both these indications, um, but the therapeutic targets are, of course, different. Chronic rhinitis concerning a lot of people in the world that have a problem with uh, breathing or talking or sleeping uh, and a constant stuffed nose. Uh, chronic migraine is one of the worst kinds of migraines or severe headache and it's also a huge population. So let's dive into this and see what it is about. But first I thought maybe we should describe a little bit our technology. Um, what we do and basically this is um, traditional hardware medtech which is uh, very easy to understand. There is a central piece called the controller, uh, a computer basically that operates this procedure. Uh, there is a disposable catheter and there is a fixation that you need to have on the patient's head in order to uh, not have to hold the catheter. Um, this controller is now going to soon be replaced by a new, smaller, lighter and cheaper to make model. Uh, and both of these are now C marked. The disposable catheter that is put in the nostril of the patient, and we'll take a look shortly how that is done, is not our business model. We basically ship these uh, catheters together with a code that is needed to make the machine operate. So we protect our business model by uh, a long code that is needed in order to uh, make the machine do a routine. And the headband of course is basically a fixture and, and there's nothing special to it. Um, this, the, the model here is a single use model so you use one catheter for one treatment session with one patient. So, uh, how is this done? Well, uh, we place uh, the catheter tip, which is um, ending with a balloon, in the lower the compartment of the nose. Uh, when it's in place, you press start, and the machine automatically fills the balloon with air to a certain pressure, and then when that is reached, it starts to vibrate. This is a certain frequency, amplitude, and, and um, uh, also uh, a pressure that is, is designed to make the, the effect uh, optimal. Uh, this goes on for 10 minutes, and then the machine asks you to change to the, to the other nostril, and, and you repeat the routine at 10 more minutes. So total treatment time is 20 minutes. Um, this can, the first time, be feeling uh, awkward and, and, and a little bit painful for some patients, not many, but a few. But the patients actually get adjusted to this treatment very, very easily. And after a minute or so, there is no problem normally at all. And, and if you have a second treatment some other time, then of course it's, it's not no big deal at all. So that is the technology. Now, what does this do? Well, this is the kinetic oscillation. The, the balloon vibrates and therefore uh, uh, stimulates the, the very neuro-rich area in, in the nose, which have various implications and effects on these both indications. So, migraine. Um, this is a pre preventive 
treatment for migraine, meaning that you take the treatment and you reduce the number of headache days uh, for a substantial period of time. Migraine is one of seven or the seventh uh, of, of the world's most uh, concerning uh, conditions. Uh, one out of seven suffer from it, according to VHA, WHO. Uh, it's the third most severe condition, according to WHO as well. Um, migraine, as everybody knows, somebody that has migraine, of course, um, but what is chronic migraine? Well, it's defined as having uh, 15 days of headache per month, whereof eight of these days contains migraine attacks or migraine uh, syndrome. This amounts to um, somewhere around 2% of the world population. So it's a large patient group that have this chronic migraine uh, condition. Otherwise, it's around 12-15% of, of any population in the world that has migraine as such. And it differs uh, drastically between women and men, uh, twice as, as common uh, among women as it is among men. And it's usually also in the um, active years, uh, adult active years. And it uh, normally goes away by age uh, when, you, when you get up in, in my age, for instance. Um, so, the normal treatment for migraines um, are usually pharmaceuticals. Uh, normal painkillers at first, special uh, uh, pharma after that, triptanes and ergots, and now recently also added a fantastic drug called monoclonal antib antibodies. It's a CGRP in inhibitor that uh, is quite costly, but also uh, uh, one of the few that is really um, preventive medicine. All the other ones are acute medicines that you take when you have an, an attack. There is a second uh, alternative which is Botox, Botox treatments uh, taken uh, four times a year, uh, starting at 31 different injection spots around the head and the face. And uh, some people have moved from or patients have moved from, from f uh, regular drugs to Botox because they lack the effect of the drugs or they can't take the, the side effects. Huge market, uh, the migraine pharma market is projected in the seven major markets to reach somewhere uh, close to, to $9 billion uh, in six years and it grows drastically. Uh, it's also interesting to note that uh, the market for migraine Botox uh, in the seven major market is a tenth of that. Uh, and that is an estimated to be reached in, in three years from now. It doesn't grow as much. It has been in the market for quite some time. So that is the market situation and, and what is the normal treatment. So why do we invest in a cro cro chronic migraine study? Um, well, we are out to... Uh, seek uh, an evidence base that is solid uh, that could lead us to a C-mark. That is what we are aiming to do, to see a mark this indication with this treatment. So currently we're running a study at nine sites in Germany and Finland um, and it's coordinated uh, from a, a neurology professor in Hamburg uh, by the name of Arne Mai. Um, this is a, a relatively large study of 140 patients that are randomized in, in control and placebo group. And we uh, are now expecting the results, or this, rather the, the last patient out of this study uh, somewhere in the first quarter of next year. This has been causing uh, a delay due to, to COVID-19 for some time, as everybody can understand. In May last year, uh, we published uh, the results or recommendations rather from the uh, data monitoring committee that performed an interim analysis at 40 percent of our first patients um, and that recommendation was very strong. It said basically continue the study, don't change anything and that is still very good news for us. So we uh, have a good feeling that already there at 40 percent of the of the planned volume of patients we had a good confirmation of that we were on the right track. So we're very excited to see what we can, can receive at the final 
uh, data in, in somewhere in, in the end of Q1. So, over to rhinitis. Uh, chronic rhinitis uh, is a widespread condition. Um, it it uh, concerns way over 200 million people in the world. Um, it is better to call it a non-allergic, non-infectious rhinitis. Um, and um, um, rhinitis as such means basically stuffed nose. The area where we can target this is um, uh, the non-allergic rhinitis, which is about 100 million people. Half of those uh, belong to the group that's called uh, idiopathic rhinitis or rhinitis without any other explanation. Uh, so that's where we target. Um, right now you have two basic uh, treatment options, either uh, regular nasal sprays, decongestive sprays, and then there is nothing, 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 and then you can go into surgery. So we land in the middle of that. That's where we are aiming to provide the tool to treat the patients. We recently uh, published that uh, we closed the inclusion in our current rhinitis study due to uh, non-conclusive uh, analysis in an interim analysis. analysis. Um, this is basically that uh, the statistics didn't uh, show strength enough, so we had to decide to stop that. Um, However, we uh, are sure that we will uh, be able to get valuable, valuable data out from this study when it's completed after the last 12-month follow-up. Our case uh, build is built on um, building strength in patents. We have over 50 patents in the world, uh, proof of concept in the market, and scientific evidence, as we have discussed. And this is what we're building on the right side. We're selling today, it's chronic rhinitis, it's CMARC, um, and it's of course affected by COVID-19, but uh, there are things happening that are extremely positive for us in the sales department. Um, we go to market through regular um, distribution channels, B2C. Um, we also have some other areas, um, a partnership in, in China, and we do franchise clinics in Sweden. So these are the three types of go-to-market models that we operate. I'll skip this for time of sake. And, and here is a, a gold plate uh, that we can discuss a little later. Um, we can come back to this, I guess, uh, during the questioning. And uh, I'll leave the recap page up because we're running out of time. Thank you for that presentation, Anders. Um, I would like to start off with the, with the, the question, uh, which one of your indications represent the biggest market? Is it the rhinitis or migraine? It is by far the migraine. Yeah. Um, that is an extremely well-defined, well-populated and rich market. Mm -hmm. um, it, you can't only look at the volume of patients because it's fairly similar in both these areas. Um, uh, the thing with rhinitis is that, as I alluded, um, there isn't really anything to offer patients for remedy right now in the middle. Therefore, the market has to accept a new metal method and, and, and adopt to it, mm. and that takes time. Mm. Whereas in the migraine side, um, you have a very highly specialized care. Uh, all migraine patients have professional uh, specialized care already. Um, there is a lot of alternatives. The thing with migraine is that none of these alternatives, be it various types of drugs or even the new mon monoclonals or Botox, uh, is effective for all patients. Mm. It's a relatively shy number of responders to each of these alternatives. So there is always a search for other things to offer the patients, which makes a wonderful opportunity for mm. us. So the biggest difference between your, could you elaborate a bit about that, the biggest difference between your migraine? Um, As market goes, yeah. uh, the, the rhinitis is still to become a market, mm. honestly, and uh, the migraine is a very well structured market. Mm. Uh, you uh, recently got access to a reimbursement code in Saudi Arabia. Um, how do you think this will affect your business there? 
Well, this is the result of the mm, quite some few years the, together with that distributor of us in, in Jeddah that have uh, been uh, working steadily to try to get to an acceptance. And this is Ronitis, by the way, so that, uh, as, as uh, migraine is not approved yet. Um, and now they finally, uh, on the private side, have uh, access to uh, an existing uh, CPR code or a reimbursement code that uh, provides payment for these treatments on a quite um, attractive number, mm -hmm. basically. So now all of a sudden we expect that this will open up the, the market for Renitis, which is quite pronounced in, in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and in the Gulf area in general. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that uh, this will lead on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is on the private side. You have uh, 100 plus uh, hospitals on the private side in, in Saudi and 400 plus uh, uh, public hospitals. Mm -hmm. This is likely to spill over to the public side as well. I would like to um uh, finish with a question regarding the goals. Could you maybe sure. take that slide? Could you talk a little bit about the goals here for 2021? Yeah, I mean, of course, the big big goal now is, is or milestone is, of course, to reach uh, the, the, the last patient out of the migrant study. Uh, and then, of course, the result has to be computed and cleaned and, and, and uh, the report generated. Then we're looking forward to, to uh, publication in, in, a, in a, a scientific journal. Uh, but we will use that immediately, that result, to accelerate the CMARC process that is already submitted since long for, for, for this indication. Um, so CMARC uh, somewhere a year from now, this our goal. And then, of course, sales uh, start on migrate uh, in conjunction with the CMARC. Mm. Um, on the chronic right now, it is the, 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 um, the let us get rid of this this um, pandemic, uh, so that the very very nice sales uh, activities and, and results we saw from Italy uh, first quarter of this year can continue where it mm. was dropped off, and then of course Saudi and and also we're looking at the Nordic area. Uh, I also showed a quick picture on the new controller, the small mm. lightweight controller that does wonders to our um, uh, gross profit. Mm. Thank you very much, Anders, for the presentation and the questioning. Thank you very much. Thank you.